Hi everybody, and welcome back to NorCal Slot Car Scene. As most of you know, Electric Dreams hosted the slot at Nationals earlier last month, and the racing was great, and the unfortunate thing about going to Electric Dreams is that you always come back with an extra slot car too. So I was looking for a car to race in the Northern California GT3 class, and Racer Sideways had just come out with a brand new Ferrari 488 GT3. It's a really good looking car, and there are not too many Ferrari GT3 cars available. So in between racing, I picked up the white kit and decided to create a new GT3 car. Obviously it's a white kit, and I had to do some painting and some decaling. And one of my favorite liveries is the Marlboro livery. The first thing I needed for the car was decals. So I looked around a little bit online. The decal set that I used was from Adelaide, and it's actually an F1 decal set for the Ferrari F300. But it, it had all the necessary stickers and logos that I was looking for. Uh, the shell is great, the Marlboro obviously, as well as the Ferrari Prancing Horse logos. So that's what I decided to use. As I said, the easy thing about the, the Marlboro livery is it's very easy to mask. Uh, I'm not a modeler by any means, but just a few minutes with some masking tape and you're ready to shoot the first color of paint. If you're a good modeler, you'd probably shoot a base coat of white and then do the red. But since I'm kind of lazy and this is going to be a race car, I just left the white kit portion of the car white and then sprayed the color over that. I didn't necessarily want something that was absolutely accurate to the Marlboro colors. I wanted something that stood out. Uh, and because it's a Ferrari, I decided to use red. So the first coat I did was Tamiya Bright Red. And I shot two coats of Tamiya Bright Red to start with. And then after that, to give it a little pop, I used a very thin coat of metallic red. And you can see it a little bit of it here. It's very hard to show in the pictures, but it's a bright red with a metallic sheen to it. And I think it looks pretty good. Once I'm done with the colors, I use Tamiya Clear as an overcoat. It helps protect the paint. And because I'm not using paint for the white, it's just a plain white plastic, when you put the clear over it, it actually looks more like white paint and uh, it actually doesn't look too bad and it's much easier to do this way only having to do one color. When I started to detail the body, I did use some clear yellow over the headlight covers just to give them a little contrast and pop. It's now on to the decals. The Adelaide decals are of the top quality. They go on easy and they look great on the cars. When I was finished, I was very pleased with the overall effect. You can see the white a little bit around the marble and the shell, but from a few feet away, you never notice it. I got my Ferrari Prancing Horse logos, the Marlboro, and the cars were ready to race. Before we take it to the racetrack, however, I do use Tamiya Clear in a bottle and just brush it on over the top of the decals. That makes sure that the decals will not come off when your car is marshaled or it's handled. One thing that I'm doing lately with most of my cars is I'm leaving a space on the hood. Uh, you see the Fiat sticker on the front and a couple little stickers up by the cowling, but there's a big area right in the center of the hood that is uh, left untouched as far as decals are concerned. The reason I do that is a practical reason. When you're racing slot cars, you do have to put lane stickers on the car, and even with the best clear coat I've ever done, sometimes the lane stickers will start to peel off the decals that are on the car. So I leave that, and now I have a perfect place to put my lane stickers and nothing to peel off underneath. As for the chassis, uh, it's kind of unique because we have a set of rules in Northern California that are probably different than a lot of yours. We require the NSR motor, no matter what brand of car you're using, uh, you have to put in the NSR 21.4K long can motor. You can see the weighting I've got here, but that's pretty track specific, so I don't think it's something you should try to duplicate on your own track. You can also notice that I don't have a pinion gear on it. And the reason for that is we race on tracks from home tracks, which are pretty small, to large commercial tracks. So I use the uh, set screw pinions, and that makes it much easier to change gear ratios from track to track. Just make sure when you buy pinions of any kind that you're getting the right diameter for the car that you're putting those pinions on. The only two real major options that I do on the car is I do add a wood guide because all the tracks I race on are wood tracks. So a wood track guide is definitely helpful. It's deeper and helps the car from de-slotting. One major improvement that I do to the rear of the car is I add an axle tube. You can buy axle tubes pre-made from certain manufacturers, uh, but I just make these myself. I use aluminum tubing, cut the size, they go right inside the bushings. You kind of have to hand fit it, but it's very easy to do. 
what this does is it ties the entire pod rear axle assembly together so there's very little flex and flex of any kind is very bad for handling in a race car and this definitely makes an improvement so there you have it a pretty quick and easy way to build in my opinion a pretty good looking gt3 race car a little bit of masking tape one color and decals and you'll have something that probably nobody else at your racetrack has. Thanks for watching. This is Jim Rose with NorCal Slot Car Scene.